Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be on makeup for photography. So if you're having family photos done like I am today, or you're having headshots done, or maternity photos, or anytime you're getting your photograph taken professionally and you want your makeup to be perfect for photographs, there are some things that you want to consider that are different than how you do your makeup daily. So this video is going to be about that. I'm also going to share a couple of hair tips for photographs. Uh, we are having our family photos taken today by Zem Photography here in Austin. Uh, she's an amazing photographer. I will have all of her info linked down below for you guys. Uh, so please check her out. I will also leave her Instagram and I'll share with you guys my final photos at the end of this. But I hope you guys find this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe before you leave and let's get started. Okay, so first we'll chat really quickly about hair. Uh, I think it's important to kind of know when your best hair is. So for me, it's the day after a blow dry. The day that I blow dry my hair, it tends to be a little bit bigger than I want it to be, a little bit frizzier. So I like my hair the next day after a blow dry. So last night I, uh, you know, blow dried my hair. I used a round brush. Um, this morning, I'm going to do a couple of things to just kind of smooth it out. But I, just, but I did want to mention that to really know what your hair looks like best. So for some people, it might look better to blow dry it just before the photographs. For other people like me, it might be the day before. So that's what I've done. And you can kind of see that I still have a little bit of the style, but I am going to go back and just touch it up before we leave for photographs. Okay, but for now, I'm going to get it out of my face so that I can show, so we can talk makeup. I'm using one of those little crimpless uh, hair ties so that it doesn't cause a crease or crimp in my hair while I'm doing my makeup. All right, so I have already applied moisturizer on my skin. Right now, I'm. this is a brand new product. I'm using the Murad Oil Control Mattifying uh, Hydrator. So I've applied this. Uh, I am going to apply a primer on my skin. I really like the Hourglass Mineral Veil. I'm just going to apply a little bit, bit of this in the center of my face, really to just kind of help smooth everything out, diminish the look of pores or any texture that I might have, which tends to come here in the center of the face. For foundation, I'm going to go with the new Too Faced Peach Perfect. I really want a foundation that gives a lot of coverage, that's mattifying, and that's long wearing. My skin right now has been pretty oily, so I need a foundation that's very mattifying. If you have very dry skin, a uh, foundation that I recommend that looks beautiful in photographs is the Face Atelier Ultra Foundation. It's a little more hydrating. It's not necessarily dewy. I don't really recommend dewy foundations for photographs because everything tends to look a little bit more shiny in photographs. So I like to stay with more of a natural or a matte finish. But again, if your skin is very dry or you're dealing with very mature skin that has a lot of texture, the Face Atelier might be a better option because it's just going to sit on the skin a little bit more pretty and it's not going to magnify any texture that you might have. But if you have pretty smooth skin, it's just very oily. Uh, I have been enjoying this foundation a lot. It's a new foundation. I've only used it for the last week or so, but I've tested it out enough to know that it's going to work well today. Uh, it's a pretty humid day outside, and I, but I really feel like this is going to give me the wearability that I need for the photographs. So I have the shade Natural Beige, which, beige, which actually is going to look a little bit darker when, you, when I apply it on my skin, but I've been doing self-tanning the last couple days to prepare for the, this day, so the rest of my body, it's going to uh, work perfectly. I'm using my beauty blender to apply this and I'm going to start in the center of my face and just press it into my skin. So see that looks quite a bit darker but it's going to be perfect for photographs. Also I'm going to use a concealer that is going to be a little more brightening to uh, just give that highlight so I think it's going to balance this foundation out well. One tip I want to share with you when it comes to makeup for photographs is go heavier, uh, even heavier than you might be comfortable with. Everything looks so much lighter in photographs. Makeup can get easily washed out in photographs, so always go heavier than you do every day, unless you're someone that wears really dramatic makeup every day. But uh, I say, you know, to play it safe, do your makeup like you would do when you're going to a special event or a black tie event or you're going out uh, and you want to wear more. That's what you want your photographs to look like. Even if it's, you know, a family photograph and you feel like that's too much makeup for it, it's probably going to be perfect in photographs. So the Beauty Blender is applying this pretty sheer. I'm going to go in with the Bobbi Brown Foundation brush just to save myself a little time and get more coverage. I could build it with the Beauty Blender, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to go in with this because this is going to give me more coverage quicker. And I definitely want full coverage for these photographs, even though pretty much everything can be photoshopped now. And if you find a great photographer, they're going to edit the photos and make your skin look good. It's just I just like to make their job a little less work. 
If you've noticed, I'm just pressing my brush rather than like sweeping or brushing. That's gonna give you the most coverage. This foundation does dry pretty quickly. I notice that you don't have a whole lot of time to work with it, so be aware of that. If you're someone that likes to go in and apply a foundation all over and then go back and blend it out, I really wouldn't recommend doing it with this foundation because it dries really quickly. I would just kind of work in sections. Okay, so if you've noticed, I'm really focused on the center of my face and I'm just making sure I'm getting the coverage that I want there. All right, now we need some concealer, don't we? Okay, I am just gonna softly kind of go over the perimeter of my face just to make sure I don't have any harsh lines there. Next for concealer, I want something full coverage and I want something brightening. I'm actually gonna use two concealers, so this isn't something I would do every day, but I'm gonna go in with the Bye Bye Under Eye to conceal my dark circles. I have some dark circles going on today, but then I'm gonna put a touch of the Kevin Aquan concealer just to brighten it up. Uh, the Bye Bye Under Eye is a fantastic concealer. I really love this. It's very hydrating to under, the under eye area, so it doesn't magnify any lines. It's a creamier consistency, so you do have to set it with a powder, and you have to be careful not to apply too much because it can move around if you do those things. So I'm just going to apply it with my finger, and then I'm going to go in with my Beauty Blender and really just press that into the skin and also absorb any excess so that I don't leave a lot there that's going to be at risk to move around. You know what? I'm actually getting a bright enough look with that. I don't think I need to go in with the Kevin Aquan. I think we're gonna leave it right there. Okay, I'm gonna set under the eyes. I'm using the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. I definitely want my concealer to stay in place. It's a humid day. I don't wanna worry about my eyeliner running or my concealer creasing, so I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of this on a damp sponge, and I'm gonna press it under the eye. Next, I'm gonna set my foundation, and I'm using the Danessa Myricks Loose Translucent Powder. And instead of using a sponge, I'm gonna use a big, soft, fluffy brush. This is the e.l.f. Total Face Brush. This is a very inexpensive brush, and I really like it for powder. I like this powder a lot, particularly because it's very sheer, and it just sets everything without looking heavy. And again, I'm just kind of bouncing it on the skin. This foundation sets pretty well on its own. Okay, so I feel like I have pretty good, flawless, matte skin, so I'm very happy with the way that this looks. Uh, next, I'm going to go in with the eyes, and then we're going to come back to the skin and contour. Okay, for eyes, I'm going to I do have microblading done, but I definitely want my brows to be perfect, so I'm going to brush them in place, and then I'm going to use my Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Definer in the shade Medium Brown, and I'm just going to go in here and darken this part of the brow. This is where I didn't really have any hair, and she went in and kind of created hair for me, or, you know, to mimic hair, but it's, it's lighter than the rest of the brow, just because there's no hair there. So I always go in there and kind of add. I really like this product a lot. If you have pretty good brows and you just need to deepen them a little bit or even out, this is a great product. If you have like very little brow and you have to create a brow, uh, you might want something a little more precise like the Brow Wiz or the NYX Micro Brow Pencil. But this is a good one just to kind of fill in. Next, I'm going to prime my eyes. I'm using the Milani Eye Primer. This has kind of been my go-to primer lately. Uh, it's a great primer. It keeps the shadow on all day. It prevents it from creasing, from fading. It's very inexpensive, and I like how light and sheer it is. I will wear a lot of makeup, but I like to wear very little layers of it. It just looks prettier that way. And I like how sheer this is. I can just use my finger and blend it all the way out. It has a little bit of color. I mean, it's pretty sheer actually, but it does kind of brighten up the lid a little bit. If you're someone that has really dark lids or purpley veins and you like to cover that, you might like something like the MAC Paint Pot because those do have color and you could get soft ochre, which is pretty much gonna cancel all that out. This isn't gonna do a little bit of toning that down, but it's not really going to cancel it out. Okay, so for eyes, I am wearing a blush um, sweater dress. At least that's my plan right now. And I have two hours till my photograph, so let's hope that plan doesn't change. I'm going to use two palettes. I'm using the um, Busy Art Neutral Matte Palette, and then I'm using this palette by Buxom that I just kind of created on my own. Um, Buxom shadows are fantastic, you guys. I don't talk about them enough on my channel. I did do a video a while back on them, which I will link down below, but this, these are beautiful colors, beautiful formulation. So first, I'm going to go and I'm going to set my whole eyelid. I'm going to use the, um, I'm going to use this shade right here. It's the second to lightest shade in the palette, just a little lighter than my skin tone, and I'm just going to set that primer. 
just to create a nice smooth canvas so when I go in with darker shades, everything blends really nicely and softly and nothing sticks. Okay, next I'm gonna go in and create my transition shade. This is a must for photographs. You really want your eye makeup to look very blended and airbrushed and um, you wanna create that definition in your eye. You wanna spend a little more time on your eye makeup and just take those extra steps to make everything look blended. I'm gonna use this shade right here. I don't know the name of it. Um, I'll have it linked down below for you guys. Actually, in the video that I did on this palette, it'll have all of these shades in there. But I'm using this in my crease. It's just a matte, warm transition shade. It's quite a bit darker than my natural skin tone. Uh, and I'm gonna apply a sheer wash of color in my crease. I always like to start softer and then just build. This is pretty warm, so it's going to pull out more green in my eye and really complement my eye color. I'm using a big, soft, fluffy brush so that I don't apply too much color and so that I have more blendability. Okay. Next, I'm gonna go in and deepen that inner corner and I'm gonna to start to work with a little bit of plums that are gonna complement the blush that I'm wearing. Um, I, and when I mean blush, I don't mean blush, but I mean the blush color of my dress. So I'm gonna go in with this purple shade here and I'm using a brush, the 221. It's a lot more precise than the 224, which is what I just used. So it's going to um, just apply this color with a little bit more punch and also control where it goes. So I'm just gonna go pretty much right in my crease with this shade. I still want you to be able to see that first transition shade. So I'm going to I'm going to go over that, but I'm not going to cover the entire thing if that makes sense. You can still see that halo of transition shade right there. And I am going to drag it down to meet my lash line. Next, I'm going to go with an I'm going to go with a deeper shade. I'm going to use this dark real brick brown. It's kind of like a real reddish brown, and I'm just going to take this right in the outer corner. You can see that I'm like slowly building this crease and dr drama, if that makes sense. I'm just like slowly building it. Instead of going in with this color initially, I wanted to just slowly build and layer. So I'm almost barely, I'm not even really moving my brush across my eye. I'm kind of just moving it in little circles. So next we're going to work on the lid. I'm going to use this shade right here. It's just a really beautiful, light, kind of peachy sherbet type of color. I'm going to load up my 213 brush, and I'm going to pack that right here on the center of my eye. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love these colors. I'm pretty proud of myself for picking these colors and putting them together. I think they're such a beautiful combination. I'm leaving the inner corner open. I mean, you could bring this all the way to the inner corner, but I'm leaving that open because I'm going to go with a brighter shimmery shade right there. But I am being very careful not to go over that outer corner. Okay, so pretty. All right, then I'm going to go in with this shade right here. It's a real shimmery, kind of like champagne pinky shade and I'm gonna just go right in the very inner corner of my eye. Actually, I want something a little brighter so I'm gonna take this white and do that. Oh yeah. Now we're putting a really bright, slightly shimmery, I'm not talking glittery, but I'm talking shimmery shade right in the inner corner. It's just really gonna open your eyes up, make them very look bright and wide-eyed. Okay, next for brow highlight, I'm gonna take this white shade and softly go under the brow with it to highlight. Okay, next I'm gonna take that brush that I did the darkest shade. I didn't add any color to it, but I'm taking it again and just going over it. Just in case I accidentally softened it with a lighter color, I wanna intensify it a little bit more. Okay, for liner, I'm using the, a black liquid pen liner and I'm gonna line the tops of my eyes. I'm gonna start about in the center of my eye and I'm gonna create a thicker line on the outer corner and I'm gonna create a slight little wing just to kind of elongate and pull my eyes up. I like to lay my pen on its side. It's the easiest way for me to get a smooth, even line. Okay, so I've created this wing. Then I'm gonna start in the outer corner very outer corner and draw a line up. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little space and then I'm gonna go and fill that little space in. I've almost created like a triangle and I'm gonna fill that in with my pen. So now you have this, let's do the other eye. I 
I am going to apply false lashes. Even though I have lash extensions, I'm pretty close to needing a fill so my lashes aren't as full as I would like them. I'm using the Kiss Shy Lashes. Okay, so I've got these lashes on. I love these lashes. I definitely recommend applying false lashes for photographs, even if you're someone that's typically wears really natural makeup and you don't really like a lot of makeup, lashes make such a difference in photos and they never look as dramatic as you might think that they do. So even if you don't wear a lot of dark eye makeup, wear lashes. They make such a difference and there's so many different styles you can get, so don't feel like you have to have really like thick, dramatic lashes on. You can find lashes that are softer, maybe even close to the length of your natural, just more full. Okay, so let's move on from lashes. I'm gonna create more definition in my face by contouring. I'm using the Marc Jacobs uh, Mirage Filter Palette. It has a great matte highlighter, wait, highlighter and then a contour. And for the brush, I'm using this NARS, I forget the name of it, but it's just a really nice contour brush by NARS. Um, I am just gonna create a little bit of a contour. This isn't a step I usually do in my routine, but in photographs, it's gonna create more definition in my face. You can kind of see what that has done, done to my face. It just created more definition to my cheekbones. I don't really have defined cheekbones because I have a really round face. So this helps kind of compensate for that. I'm not gonna take this too far over. I'm really just gonna go back and forth uh, till I get to where my cheek pops. So if I were to smile and my cheek pops there, that's where we're gonna stop. Next, I am gonna contour my nose. This isn't a step I do every day, but I have a pretty round kind of, I think I have a big nose, but it's kind of round and I like to create a little bit more definition there. So I'm gonna take the same brush and the same powder and I'm just gonna dust down the side of my nose. You can kind of see what that, that's done. It's really slimmed my nose down a little bit When I do this, I wonder why I don't do it every day. I think it makes such a difference, and it's pretty quick and pretty easy. For blush, I'm gonna use one of my favorite blushes. I raved about this quite a bit this year. It's the Tarte Party Blush. I got this free in a Sephora like birthday gift, I think it was, and I love it. And I'm just gonna smile and pop this on my cheeks. Oh, you know what I did? I forgot bronzer. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of bronzer since I did contour, I don't need too much. I'm gonna go in with the Hourglass and this big fluffy MAC brush. And I'm just going to kind of warm up my face a bit. I don't want to put too much on my cheeks because I already have my contour there and I am going to use blush, so I want to be careful. But I do want to warm up the rest of my face. So I'm just going around my hairline a little bit and around my jawline. Not too much. I'm actually going less on the bronzer than I normally would because I do have that contour there. For blush, back to blush. So for blush, I'm just going to apply it right on the apples of my cheek and blend it down. Now, I personally don't like to highlight my skin with shimmery products very often, but if you are someone that likes to use a lot of highlight for photographs, I would be very careful with that. Uh, one product that I would recommend is the Hourglass uh, Strobing Powders, just because these are a very... Oh, this is actually the blush. Huh. Okay, well, I grabbed the blush and not the strobing powder, but the strobing powder is essentially the same thing without color. Uh, but these just have a really nice, soft highlight. I would stay away from things that are really metallic or one of those one of those like highlights that's just really intense. Um, you're already going to have natural highlights if you're working with a great photographer that knows lighting and has a great camera. You're going to see those natural highlights, especially in post-production. So um, I like to keep the skin pretty matte, but if you do use a highlighter, use something sheer and light. I really like the Hourglass, and really keep it soft and minimal just on the high planes of your face. So really, I would concentrate on this bone right here um, that you can feel when you touch your skin, but I'm gonna keep my skin matte. Okay, so for lower lash line, I'm gonna line the inner end of my eye with the brightening pencil. You guys know this is a step that I love, and I'm gonna go over it a little bit. I want it to be a little bit more intense than it normally is. Next, I'm gonna take um, this deep plum eyeliner, and I'm gonna go right under my eye real softly, and I'm gonna stop about in the center because I'm gonna go over it with an eyeshadow and a smoker brush to blend it out a little bit and smoke it out. Plus, I don't wanna to apply too much of that because it is a real waxy pencil, and I don't want it to uh, smudge. Okay, so to smoke that out, I'm gonna go in with this purple shade that I used in my crease, and I'm using a brush like this, just a great like smoking pencil brush and I'm just gonna go right over that line. I'm gonna take it over a little bit more. Oh, 
love I love these shadows this look I love this look I gotta say I love it then I'm gonna take a, a little bit more of that white shade this one here and I'm gonna just brighten up a little bit more just realized I forgot to grab mascara, but clearly at this point I would mascara my lower lash line. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to lips. So for lips, I recommend going a little bit deeper or brighter than you normally do. So if you're someone that likes a really like nude pale lip, I recommend going with something a little bit deeper. You can stick with a nude, but maybe a deeper nude because again, in photographs, it's just going to completely wash out and it's going to look like you have nothing on your lips and you don't want that. I like kind of cool tone pinks and I think it's going to work well with the sweater dress that I'm wearing. So I'm lining my lips with this Bite Beauty lip liner. It's, you can see I love it. I have barely any left uh, in the shade 26 and I'm going to just line my lips and fill it in with this pencil. For lipstick, I'm using this tiny little Jouer lip cream. I got this recently in a set by Derm Store and I love it. It's very long wearing. It's the shade Dulce de Leche. These are a very comfortable long wearing lipstick. They don't really feel very drying on the lips, but they stay in place. So my makeup is done, you guys. Um, so let's talk about hair. So I am gonna go downstairs and kind of smooth everything out with a, um, with a flat iron. I'm just going to flat iron the bottom of my hair to just kind of create a little bit more curl. I'm not going to flat iron the top because I want to keep the volume that I have here, but I do want to talk about flyaways. Flyaways are a big deal when it comes to photographs. There's something you probably don't think much of because you don't maybe see them that noticeable. Some photographers will edit them out as they should, but others might leave them. And when you get the photographs back, it'll be a point of focus for you. So for flyaways, the best thing to do is find a a uh, very light, flexible hold hairspray. And honestly, I don't know my feelings on this. I just picked this up at Target. I haven't really formed an opinion on it, good or bad, but this is the Pantene Air Spray Healthy Feel. It says it is alcohol free, brushable, flexible. So, um, and you can do two things. You can either spray this on your brush. So you can either spray it on like a smoothing brush like this, and smooth out like you can see I have a lot of these flyaways and little hairs that just stick up so you can use the brush to just gently tone those down or you can use your uh, spray little hairspray on your hands and smooth your hair out as well um, but I do recommend using a brush or your hand versus spraying your hair it's going to do what you want it to do, which is tame those flyaways, but still provide a lot of movement in your hair and not create a really like heavy, crispy look to your hair. Uh, one thing that I think people have a misconception of is using like a serum or a hair oil to control the flyaways. That really doesn't help. What that does is it does create a shine to your hair, but it can also weigh your hair down and it doesn't do anything to the flyaways. The flyaways will still kind of bounce up and um, be an issue. So again, Spraying a brush is probably my favorite tip. Just spray it like that and just use that smoothing brush to gently get the hair in place how you want it to. All right, I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm gonna just do a couple tweaks to my hair, get dressed, and I will share my final images with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please do so before you leave. Leave me your questions and comments down below, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.